Hello guys, welcome to the channel. We have done a lot of videos to fine tune the language models. In this video, we are going to see how to fine tune a vision model. A vision model is simply a model which enables you to chat with your images or which understand the images on the basis of your text prompt. In this video, we are going to fine tune this very amazing model from Hugging Face called as IDFX2. I already have covered the architecture and local installation of this model on my channel. So if you're interested, please check it out. The focus of this video is to make you appreciate as how easy it has become to fine tune these vision models and language models also to your own data requirement. So when we say fine tuning, all it means is that we want to give the context of our own data to the model. We already have seen that giving the context to the model in the form of prompt engineering, fine tuning, and then there are a few other ways is not that easy, especially when it comes to vision models. And that is where we have to thank Hugging Face because they have come up with some of the tools which make it fairly straightforward to fine tune these models. Now, when we say fine tuning, there are various ways of fine tuning. One of the most common ones is supervised fine tuning. In supervised fine tuning, what happens is that we take the data set, we label that data set, and then we give it to model and then model learns from it. In case of image or vision models, for example, we have a lot of images of animals. We label those images as per their uh, data. For example, we label the dog's image as a dog or cute dog or angry dog, big dog, small dog, that sort of stuff. And then when models go through that data, it learns from the image and its label that this is what this image means. Now, this supervised fine tuning is, of course, time consuming, a lot of manual labor required, or even if you do it through any other model, it just takes a lot of time, money and resources. That is where preference optimization is quite handy. We already have covered a lot of uh, types of preference optimization like what is PPO, DPO, ORPO, and I have covered them in great detail. So please search my channel. In very simple words, what all of these preference optimization technique techniques mean is that they take an image and then they take some candidate answers. And out of those candidate answers, it selects the accepted one or the best one and it rejects the rest of them. Normally they come in pair. So we have an image, then we have an accepted answer and a rejected answer. So image, uh, so the models just go through all of these pairs. And then once they are done, then whenever a new image is presented, model knows which one, uh, which answer is the accepted one and which is the rejected one. So it always gives you the accepted ones. And these are all human accepted ones. So model then understands human nuances and human preferences. And that is why this method is widely used for not only fine tuning vision models, but also language models. And one of the most common one is direct preference optimization. And in this video, we are going to use this DPO for vision and language models. And I will be using a Jupyter notebook. Before I show you the whole process with the code, let me give a huge shout out to Mast Compute for sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. I will also give you a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs, so do check them out. And this is a VM I'm using, Ubuntu 22.04. And this is my GPU card of 48 GPU of VRAM, NVIDIA RTX A6000. Let me clear the screen. First up, let's create a Conda environment, which is to keep everything separate and simple. And then I will launch my Jupyter Notebook in it. Let's wait for it to get installed and activated. Shouldn't take too long. And that is done. Let me install and run my Jupyter Notebook here. And then it is going to launch it in the browser. So let's wait for it to get launch. So the notebook is launched. Let me install some of the prerequisites, which include transformers. We also would need 
torch here data sets trl performance efficient fine tuning and accelerate so let me run it it is going to install all of this stuff will take a bit of a time so let's wait for it to finish all the prerequisites are installed let's import these libraries and i'm importing all of this data set os and all that stuff that is done now let's load our data set i'm going to use this open bmb's uh, reinforcement learning with ai and feedback vision data set and if you look at the data set viewer you see this is what i was talking about there is an image there is a question and then let me sorry go down a bit so that i could move it so if i go on here on the right hand side there is a question then there is an answer here chosen rejected and original one there you go so you, this is a rejected and then you can ignore rest of the stuff here where the image path and stuff so the thing of importance are these your image what is the question then chosen and rejected one and model gets trained on it and whenever a similar image is presented model always knows that what is the chosen answer by the human so it is more grounded in our human preferences and that is what we are going to do and this is the data set which we are going to use and fine tune our id fix model you can of course use your own data set make sure that it is in this format okay so now you know what the data set looks like and you can even check it out too if you like and i could show you uh, a quick way of doing it so we already have imported that data set you can load it something like this i'm just splitting it picking up the just one percent of it it has just loaded this uh, data set and it is just going to pick up only one percent let's wait for it almost there it is downloading the data shouldn't take too long now okay i'm going to pause it to speed it up so it has downloaded the data and then it has generated the split and let's check it out what it looks like let's grab the sample out of it okay so it is just saying that it couldn't find it let me see what happened here okay so i couldn't uh, i forgot to install this below so let me quickly install it so I'm just going to use this pip command to install pillow and then we will do the sample again. Okay, still I think there is some, I think I need to restart it, I guess. So I have restarted it and this time it worked because the kernel now knows where, what pillow is and now you can show the image. There you go. So this is the image from the data set. And of course you can iterate through it. And then similarly you can... Um, go with what the question and answers are from the sample so for example if you see the sample um the question this is the image you already have seen it and then let me show you the question now and question will be about this image so question is how many families let's see the rejected answer by the humans in this data set this is a rejected answer and let's see what was the chosen one so this is a chosen answer here that image shows the union or table setup so this is how these models get trained on on this data so now you know what the data looks like so that is done now we already have specified our data set so let me just do that sorry my copy paste is bit patchy today okay let's do it now so again i'm specifying the data set and instead of one percent i just want to split in the train so that is all done i just initialize it we already have checked the data set if you want to see what data side uh, what the config of this data set is just run data set command and it is telling you image these are the columns and then these are the number of rows around eighty-three thousand. now if you just want to uh, select the data set on like a uh, subset of 20k example let's do it even i could maybe i'll just go with smaller one so
so this command is instead of training on all of it it is just going on 20 uh, thousand one maybe even i will just go with uh, how about we go with 1000 just to see that it will be able to you know maybe 500 just to speed it up because i just want to show you the process so we have just selected the 500 rows from the data set and now let me quickly show you the data data set command again it should show uh, show us 500 okay that is good i could even reduce it but that is fine okay let me even reduce it further so that it will be quicker i have reduced it to 100 images 100 rows and now i am downloading the tokenizer and the base model i defix to 8 billion and then we will point you in this model on our this data set so let me run it and you can see that it has started downloading there are seven shards of it 4.64 gig hopefully it will fit onto my 48 gp of vram so let's cross our fingers let's wait for it to get downloaded model is almost downloaded and this is a moment of truth that hopefully it is going to fit on our gpu it is loading the shards at the moment of fit done okay all set so not only the model has been downloaded but also the tokenizer is also there and now let's define a function provided by hugging face which is which we can use to format our data set and all we are doing here is we are just taking our data set and then converting it into chatable format which works like prompt chosen and rejected and we define the roles for the user and for the model assistant is the model and user is the user so there is a question there is a chosen one and there is a rejected one and then we are applying the chatable template on top of it so let me run it and that function is defined let's convert our data set as per this format by using the map function from python let's wait for it that is almost done yeah because we just used 100 examples so it is quick now also let's ensure that image are decoded because it is just uh, makes it easier and it won't really store our bytes let's run it disgusting the data set which is good and image has been decoded okay now let's set our trading arguments and primarily what we are going to do now is to define the dpo config let me paste it here so this is our dpo or direct preference optimization fine tuning configuration here in this one this is where output directory is where we will be putting our new fine-tuned model we are using bfloat 16 as a data type and then we are specifying gradient checkpointing to be true gradient checkpointing is a technique to store and reuse intermediate gradients to reduce memory usage during training and gradient is simply a measure of how much each model parameter contributes to the loss used to update parameter during training and then we are setting gradient accumulation to 32 this is a process of accumulating gradients from multiple batches before updating model parameters and then we are also setting per device train batch size to 2 that is sort of a that is a set of training example used to compute gradients and update model parameters in one iteration and epoch simply means um, that it's a number of complete passes through the training data set during the training and then we are logging it and specifying how many workers to be found so let me run it this has just set the uh, configuration we haven't started the training yet and now it is time to specify the trainer with the help of dpo trainer from hugging face and that that is why hugging face has made it so easy to use these sort of stuff so we are just going to use all the linear modules let's wait for it you can ignore this warning for now shouldn't take too long it is just initializing the trainer for us and that is done and now it is time to run the training and in order to run the training all you need to do is to run this command this is going to start the training process and it is going to take a bit of a time depending upon your size of data set and your gpu 
so you have started the training it is initializing and then it is going to start it is because we are just at one epoch so it will be one pass through over 100 rows of data set and because of the size of the image it just finished very quickly and then this is what it did there was this epoch this is was a training loss and then uh, some other parameter which it did here now as you can see here that we haven't set, pushed our data of uh, our new model to the hugging face but if you want you can set this push to hub true and then you would need to put your hugging face token here and then it is also going to publish your model onto the hugging face where you can share it with public or with your team and then they can also use it out but it does have generated our checkpoint or the resultant model locally let me show you where let me open my file explorer let's go to home and then sorry there you go i just saw it above there you go so this is the name which we gave it these are the checkpoints and there you go our um, bin file our pth file scheduler our safe tensors you can upload it and of course you can do a lot of things with it you can use hugging face own libraries to convert it into gtu format sky is the limit there so that's it guys all in all amazing stuff um hugging face has really made it so easy to do the fine tuning and you can use any data set of your choice and you can use any vision model and from hugging face and then use it to fine tune your vision model on your own data i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what you think i will put all of these commands in my blog and i will drop the link in video's description so if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching